Hey folks, it's Rithgar here. How you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19. I'm just bringing our um, turner down here. Uh, I'm going to put that one in front of the roller because the roller is not something that we're going to be using very often. So we can just dump this one down here and I should think that would be absolutely fine. It's not going to cause us any issues. Uh, but what I also wanted to do today was not use that one. I want to go over here and I want to see how our little tiny Fiat gets on with hauling that rake around the field. Um, I, I have no idea. The 1300 DT. Can we actually use this bad boy to pull that rake? I don't see why we shouldn't be able to, because I don't think it requires a huge amount of horsepower to pull. This is my theory. We, we can find out. We go into here, and we have a look into wind rowers right there. This one requires 35 horsepower. It actually requires less than any other. That's very cool. 35 horsepower. So what do you put out? Do you... Two... <laughs> 200 horsepower the pickup 1978 puts out this one's 300 horsepower that's only 23 and then the mahindra is 83 horsepower and so is that one but seriously these ones over here 300 horsepower that is a very very powerful machine i wouldn't have thought that the horsepower should be quite that much but i suppose well i, I, I don't know um it just feels excessive it, it does. It, it just feels like it's a little bit excessive. I don't think it needs to be that much, but um, who am I to argue? If that's what it is, that's what it is. Now, we'll bring this one over here. I'm also extremely croaky at the moment, um, so I'm, I'm going to probably start croaking a little bit here and there. Let's get this one unfolded. We've got a second thing of wool turn up. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. We used to have six pallets of wool go down in the wool place. Now we only have four. We've only got room for four. Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. We go into here and we go to animal pens. Um, we've got a small sheep enclosure right here. Maximum of 80 sheep. So, yeah, it doesn't actually need to go much higher than that because there's only so many that it can put out. Um, if you've got, if you want a thousand sheep, obviously, you know, go 250. I'm assuming that the placeable area for wool pallets is more. A thousand sheep, you have four of these pastures here. So you'd still have four separate lots of wool being produced. Um, we just got to get used to doing things slightly differently, that's all. Not what we're used to. We've got new things now. New techniques, new methods. How's our chickens doing? They've got, they're on the third box at the moment. Yeah, let's not worry about them. Let's get this raking done. Then we can get our baling done. At least started. And, right, so let's lower down. How is this going to cope? So, I mean, it, it drags it round the field with no problems at all. We've we got no issues here. We're going along the lower part of this at the moment. Uh, so there's no issues with that. This is where it's going to get interesting because it's exactly the same thing where it was with the tedder. Except there, it's going all right. I've left a little bit of hay out on the side. Uh, one thing that I always loved about Seasons was its way that it would tidy everything up for you. Leave it all neat and tidy and you wouldn't have to worry about it. We've got... It's, it's very messy up this end. We've got a lot of weeds up here. I think we need to go and get the plow. And we need to plow that other end of this field in order to tidy it up a bit more. Maybe also do a little bit here and take out a few extra trees. We'll see about doing that at some point. I don't know when we'll do that, but we will see about doing that at some point. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm plan my next live stream I'm planning to do, um, it'll be two live streams, the same as I did this time. We'll do one on one game and then we'll do another on the Saturday evening, which will be on here. It's going to be the weekend just before Christmas. Um, I'm not quite sure what the other game is going to be, but that's, that's, that's when we're going to do it at the moment, is the weekend before Christmas. At the moment, I'm thinking every three or four weeks, probably I will aim for every three weeks. Uh, Senlea did suggest that maybe we could try doing a live stream every week um, and do one game on a Friday, well, maybe even have like Saturday night as live streaming night, but do one game one week and then Farming Simulator the following week 
Uh, personally, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't think I really have time to do quite that many. I, I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, so we'll see. We're, we're going to sort of play this by ear. We'll start off. I'm not going to overcommit. The last thing I want to do is overcommit on this. Um, and I'm thinking to start with, if we work on doing... Oh, whoa! No, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't go and kill that crop. Oops. Also, don't turn... It did. It, it, it levered it up. I just seen it... There, look. It's levering it up because it turned too sharp. It's actually doing it. Okay, that's very cool. That is very, very cool that it's doing that. I need to do another run down here. And no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. I know what I need to do. I need to, to bring this one back like this, look. This is what we want to do. We want to bring it round. And now I can turn it without having to turn too sharp. But I don't need to bring it right up to the end of the row, do I? Because we'll, we'll tidy this up at the end. I want to bring it to about there. Then lower it down. And then, see, even there, I, I could have gone further forward without having to worry about it. We'll take this one up through. And then I've... See, I went a little bit too far on that one, I think. I don't need to worry about that. Then we come on round and do a slow sort of turn. I mean, yeah, we, we, we do actually need to shunt a little bit on this end, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll have to shunt on both ends. In order to do this properly, we are going to have to do some shunting on this rather than just a quick spin around. Um, but it will still work. And then we can bring that one up. Now, this one here... I think it'd be better if I do it like that. Put it right down in the middle of it, and then it will actually work. So we run up through here. It's not like we've got a lot here, is it? It's, it's not like we've got masses and masses of hay to deal with. We could probably do this field fairly quickly without even raking it at all. Zero raking on this field, and we can still do it in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm not that concerned about this field. Um, I mean, yeah, it would take a bit longer. It would definitely take a bit longer, but not that much longer. I mean, I've actually gone and picked up a small field, not much smaller than this, completely by hand, gathered it all up. We did use a windrower, and we did cut... It was an old wheeled windrower, and we did windrow it a little bit. Uh, we, we didn't even windrow it all that much. We, we kind of windrowed some of the thinner bits on the ground, and where it was quite thick on the ground, we just left it as it was. And then we went round with the trailer, and we forked it all loose into the trailer picked it up like that because we didn't have a baler um and that field judging by the size of the tractor in this field right here i you know it's, it's not far off it really isn't it's it's on an, it, it fairly similar to this actually this would be about the size of the field that we picked up it was uh three or four loads on a very small trailer we carried it back to the shed put it all into the shed job done it was actually quite simple I mean, personally, I was sorry that we didn't have a baler. I wanted to do it with a small baler, but uh, we, we didn't have one available, and we couldn't afford to buy one because they're like 500 quid for um, a, a second-hand small baler, and you're getting a pretty ropey-looking one. Uh, you spend about a £1,000 on an old second-hand small baler, and you'll have one that should work. Uh, that, that, that's about the best you can hope for, I think, really, is one that should work. And I actually, tell me in the comment section, does anybody have like a small holding? Do you have a small old baler? Um, how much have you paid for it? Anybody that has actually got a small old baler, um, but has bought, well, you know, any, any kind of small conventional baler, how much have you paid for it? Doesn't matter where you are in the world, I'm interested to know, how much did you pay for a small baler if you've bought one in the last three or four years? Um, and I, I'm just wanted to get, I want to get an idea of what sort of, you know, prices that people pay for these things around the world. I know that they do make new balers. They do, they do make new conventional balers. Um, one of the more popular configurations for the newer ones, though, is actually with the, uh, pickup reel underneath the bale chamber, rather than the traditional, um, on the side of the bale chamber. So that you, um, it's a much more compact looking baler. Uh, you can go and buy those brand spanking new for something like £26,000 or the equivalent in dollars or whatever it is, whatever currency you happen to use. I don't have £26,000, so it, it's not really something that I will have to worry about um, either now or any time in the near future, I would imagine. 
And it's got to be said, if I had a spare £26,000, I would probably be looking at buying a small piece of land. I happened to see a small piece of land for sale the other day for £30,000. And it was a piece of woodland. It was three and a half acres of woodland. Uh, I do occasionally look at land for sale. I, I, I like to keep an eye on land for sale, see what prices are, that sort of thing. It's just something I do every now and then. Um, many of you know my dream is to get a small piece of land. So I, I frequently look at pieces of land. Well, frequently. Uh, every now and then. Once every six to eight weeks, I look at different prices of land just to see what it's doing. Um, but I seen a small piece of woodland. It's about three and a half acres. Uh, it was all conifer trees, but it had new fence around the edge of it. Three and a half acres is not a very big plot, but it was, you know, it'd be plenty big enough. It looked awesome. £30,000, right? I don't have £30,000. I can assure you, though, if I do manage to find a spare £30,000 in the next couple of weeks, uh, one of the first things I'd seriously be considering is buying that piece of land, you know, with the trees and everything. Um, although it's got to be said that if I had £30,000 right now... Um, Sen might point out that we have one or two other things that we want to consider paying for first before we go rushing off to go and buy a couple of acres of woodland. Um, you know, I mean, I mean yes, ad admittedly our mortgage is considerably bigger than £30,000, but still, it's um, it, 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 there's those things that one needs to consider. Um, I may be able to persuade her that the, it, the best possible thing I could do is buy a piece of woodland. Because then I could make videos. I, I could go camping in my piece of woodland. And I could make videos of me camping in my piece of woodland and everybody would want to watch them. Millions of people would want to watch them. Okay, maybe not. Um, I don't even have a camera. So I'd spend 30 grand on a piece of woodland. I'd then have to find an additional thousand pounds or whatever it is for fees. So I'm, I'm already a thousand pounds in the hole. Um, and, and then in order to be able to actually make it pay, what am I going to have to do then? Oh, yes. I'm going to have to go and magic up um, another however much for a decent camera or two and a tripod. Um, I have got a tripod. I can, I, I've, I've got a tripod that I can use. That's, that's at least is a start. But you, you, you're still going to get things like, um, you know, the, the other bits that you, you want for such tasks. Um, what would those be? We, we've got... Why is that still... Why is that on hay? It seems to be automatically on hay. I thought that it was on... Um, I thought we the last crop that we did in here was... Uh, gra not grass, uh, straw. I thought the last crop we did was straw. This isn't going to turn out the, the, with the previous crop in it, is it? Oops, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. I'm going to open that bad boy. It is. I am not happy about that. So we've now got... We, we filled our bale out. We've we finished the bale off. Now it's coming as hay. So if you've got one litre of straw left in the chamber, it then turns the rest of that bale into straw. I don't like that. I like the old method, where it turned whatever was in the chamber into the new bales. Maybe there's a way to empty it out. We'll have to have a look and see if we can empty it out. Maybe that's what I did wrong. I should have emptied out the bale and it would have been a part bale. Is this what we need to do? Or is this a bug? Anybody know? Get in the comment section, let me know. I'm, I'm very interested to find out. Is this a bug or is this something that is supposed to happen? i got a bale of hay right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy to have a bale of hay. Um... I'm wondering, yeah, we'll see when we get, actually, we, we can see right here. Let's go. Uh, turn off baler. Honk. Detach. I'm turning off the baler. Lift the pickup. Empty. No, I can't empty it. Right. This is highly suspicious. And highly suspect. I'm not supposed to have a bale of straw come out when I've baled hay. I'm not sure what we do about that. I mean, I could reset it to the shop every time. Because resetting it to the shop does actually empty it out. Or at least it used to. Maybe it does again. We'll, we'll wait and see. Let's see what happens when we change fields. 
Once, once we change here. If we've only got like a little tiny bit in there, I, d I don't know how much we had in there. Was it more than, ha was it because we had more than half a baleful? Is that what it was? Maybe it's, maybe it's on whichever is the half of the baler. I have a feeling it's not. I got a feeling that it's, that it's just the new way. It is, it is just the way. Bring this one round here. There we go. Never done much round bailing in real life. Not actually bailing. I've, I've done plenty of handling of round bales. Um, but actually driving the baler myself, nope. Never really done it. Done plenty of square baling. I've done some conventional baling myself, but again, it, it's more of a thing that um, I've handled the bales that someone else has baled. Um, majority of my baling has been with a, a, a class quadrant 1200. That was the majority of the baling that I've done in my lifetime. Class Quadrant 1200, horrible baler, shear pins break for a pastime, but it was still fun. And I did use for a while the next model up, the 2200. That was a bit of a beast. It had um, slip clutches rather than um, uh, shear pins for most of it. And yeah, you, you'd go flying along and then you slip clutch would go, you just power it down power it back on again and away you go again it was absolutely brilliant so much better than having to get out and change a shear pin every time really was really made a huge difference i think they've gone up again now there's another model up you've got the now the, the quadrant 3200 um i think it's the 3200 i don't know i haven't kept up with progress it's been a long time um back when i was doing the bailing the 2200 was just coming out um the ones that i was using was old clapped out second hand machines that someone else had already beaten up and abused and so yeah i was i was on i was i was on the lower end of the scale i, I was definitely on the lower end of the scale when it came to handling the machinery the little bit that i did with the 2200 i did maybe i think 130 150 acres of baling with the 2200 that was a real treat I did enjoy doing that, but um, yeah, I, I, I was put on to a different job, unfortunately, so I wasn't able to continue. Um, but that one, that, that one worked quite well. Oh no, hang on. No, because there, there was some other stuff that I did with that baler as well. I may have actually done three or four hundred acres with it in the end. Still not a huge amount, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I know that some people can do three or four hundred acres of baling in a single day. Uh, I didn't because it was lots of different fields and stuff, but uh, I, I was still able to do some. I still managed to do little bits here and there. Right, now the big question. We've got one more run up through here, and then that is going to be all of our hay all done. And it's going to leave us behind with just a little tiny bit in the bale. Actually, this is going to be a really good indication because this is going to leave us a very small quantity in the bale chamber. What happens to it? What happens to our last bale? Right? We go in here and we've now gathered up 230. Power that one down. And I bring it on down this way. What I didn't do is I didn't fold it when I put it away into storage. So I've now folded it to put it away into storage. I didn't do that previously. Maybe that will have affected it. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll come along here and down our track on side over here. Try to avoid taking out the hay turner right there. We want to go over this way and start this field up on this side, I think. Um, we'll come up here beside this tree and we'll go in here. So let's see. We want to unfold it there. So we put the wheels back on the side. I didn't want to do that. Uh, lower it down. Start it up. Now it should, if it's anything like the others, it should switch up. It's not. This first one's going to be a bale of hay. It doesn't matter. Right. I can either reset it up to the shop, which I think is the only option that we've got. Or I've got to do this. Uh, but it does appear that I'm not allowed to actually empty the baler out in order to finish this, uh, to, to, like, get the new bale. Is this a bug, or is this a new intended mechanic of the game? Because it didn't, like, there. You see where it just sort of caught? We had an ever so slight little bit of lag on input from the game. Um, that was fairly normal. You know, you expected that when you changed product. Um, but is, is this the new way? Is this just how it is or is it not? It doesn't feel right. 
He definitely feels like this is not how it should be, but I mean, I don't know. It could, it could be. They may have decided that it's less likely to cause issues with the game um, getting hung up or anything if they have it like that so that it only changes product on a new bale instead of changing product every time you switch product. Because what this is going to stop is if you've got a field where you've only done like half the turning, um, it's going to stop you from being able to... Well, no, it's not. It's, it's not going to... It's, it's not actually going to change any mechanics at all. I shouldn't have unloaded it like that. That one's just going to roll down across the field and cause me problems, isn't it? I'll see if I can race it down. Um, no, I was just thinking, well, it's going to stop you from, like, going into a field and getting um, mostly one crop and then changing over at the last minute to another crop. Well, no, it won't, because you just go in and you pick up a little tiny bit of grass... And then go and bale a load of straw, and you've still got your bale of your, your bale of grass, right? As soon as I let the bale out, I then come back over to this field, and I get a little tiny bit of grass in the baler. Then I go and bale more straw, and it lets out a bale of grass at the end of it. And I just keep doing that. So you can still cheat and get silage bales out of straw. So I'm not really sure how this is beneficial it's just a nuisance because when you go to a new field now instead of having the new bales we've got the bale that you were in in the last field which like now i got an odd bale of straw stuck up in the middle of the field which is a real pain right that that is an absolute pain i mean yes it is a, a realistic pain it is something that does happen in real life and it is a jolly nuisance especially when you're going from like straw to hay or something like that normally though you just drag the bale out of the baler you got a part one that's, be, that's been made. You got you climb inside the baler and you drag out the, the bits of it. I've done that many times. And then you move on into the new field. If you're moving from one farm to the other, you've got to go and do that. So you don't get any um, seed contamination moving from one field to the other. Some farmers are very particular about that. Others don't particularly care. And they're quite happy for you to turn up with half a bale inside the chamber. And then you leave it behind for them. And then they have an extra half a bale. Although they usually insist that you leave the, the, their own product on the ground as well. They just want you to turn up with another half a bale. Um, hmm. So, well, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. We, we, we'll see how, how this works out. Um, but I mean, we haven't got that much to do in here. Uh, we've got the thick crop in here now. Come along this top end. Let me just tidy up those little bits there. And then there's another. We've got a few little bits on this end that we want to leave behind. There's our round bale that's rolled down across. That's not actually done too badly. And it's fairly thin on this bit. And then we start the land work. That's where it really starts to bulk out a bit. Drop you out. Uh, I don't know whether to work from the top. I don't think we need to work from the top of the field. So then we move into that one like that. Okay, so we've, we've done the small bits. We've gathered up a lot of it. There's going to be a few bits to tidy up around the trees. Mostly we've got the long runs up and down. And then our next task is going to be to go and get a wrapper. Bring the wrapper back here and start doing some wrapping. We've, although we can, we can get the hay as well. I was wondering if we should get the hay first. Um, we might get the hay first and bring that back to the yard. Sort of put that in our yard. I'm going to go up around here and try and get these wiggly bits up the top. And we'll work our way from the top of the field down to the bottom I think you up round there see I've, I've left a bit behind there that wasn't very good once I tell I'll, I'll go back up this run and then we'll tidy up around the tree as well bring you down around there there we go this one can turn quite sharp you usually on a baler you've got a double jointed PCO shaft so you are actually able to turn fairly sharp with the thing it's not normally much of an issue with that Let's back that up a bit. Uh, oop. Bring it up a bit. Up, uphill slightly there. About right. Okay, that's looking good. Um, yeah, we've got a couple of bits right there. And then this little slice down here. So if I go up round and I'll grab those bits of grass there so that we've tidied this up properly. Um, I think we might go and get the bale accumulator next. We've got... A bale of straw right there. I think we'll keep the, over, over the other side, over in the other field. Not right here. 
Um, I think we will keep that bale of straw. We'll just add it to the four that we've got over there so that they can it can be used for the horses because we'll probably be glad of using this. There's no point in selling it. Um, the hay we're also keeping. That's for the horses and for the sheep. And then these bales over here, which is all silage, uh, these are the ones that we're, we're going to sell all of them. We'll take all of these over to that barn and we'll sell them and see how much we get for silage at the barn. We should get a fairly reasonable amount. We sold straw up there and we got a good amount for the straw, so I'm quite confident that silage is going to be worth a fortune because we're on easy mode, remember? Easy mode, the prices are always absolutely spectacular. You'd be disappointed if they weren't. Let's, let's, let's be honest. I, I, I personally, I'd be very disappointed if they weren't. Um, looking at the baler, looking at the tractor, I have had a few people asking me if I could please clean my equipment. You're probably right. After we have leased the wrapper and we've leased the bale accumulator, we will seriously look at getting a cleaner, we're, we're get, getting a pressure washer. It's about time we did. It's something that we've been needing to do for a while. We did have a pressure washer temporarily for, you know, it was very quick. It didn't last very long. Um, and then we sold it because it was in the wrong place. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, yes, I concur. Having a pressure washer around here is probably going to be a very good thing. Put a bit of spit shine on some of these machines. Uh, it's, it's, it's just generally going to make it look a little bit better. Looks like we... We take a bit of pride in our work, and that's that's an important thing. You, you need to take pride in your work. You can't just be a slob and just let it all go to, to waste and ruin. And partly because as the dirt builds up on some of these machines, it can actually start to uh, like eat into the paint a little bit. And as far as I know, it's actually better for the uh, machinery to have all the layers of dirt and everything cleaned off. There's not just the paint on the outside, because when you start pressure washing, you actually start removing some of the accumulated grime that builds up in some of the more important bits of the metalwork, and that stops it from holding... The, that mud, that will hold moisture, and it holds it up against the metal, which encourages it to go rusty. So by cleaning the stuff, you're actually going to uh, prolong the life of machinery keep it nice and clean and it does actually genuinely prolong the life of the machinery this is why so many farmers will invest into a pressure washer because it's actually financially a viable option because it keeps their machinery healthy and um, shiny for longer it's not just about looking good not everything is about looking good some things do actually have practical purpose so yeah pressure washing the machinery is actually a, a financially sensible move. If I whiz you round that way, then get to there, then we can back up, we can take the rest of that run there. It's very easy when you're reversing with the round baler to jackknife it, because it's got such a short drawbar on it, it's actually very, very easy to accidentally turn just a little bit too sharp, and then jackknife the thing, like there. It's, it, it's very, very easy to do that, it, unless you're concentrating. Short trailers are much more difficult to reverse than long trailers. That's why a lot of people with a car trailer genuinely will struggle to reverse it, because a car trailer invariably has a very short wheelbase. Most car trailers as well are not designed to sit on the hitch. Most car trailers, the weight goes on the wheels. It doesn't sit on the car. Because otherwise the, cut, the steering on the car becomes a lot lighter. So the trailer has the wheels in the middle so that the weight sits on the trailer. And all the car is doing is pulling it rather than holding it. And um, that makes a difference as well. So you've got all these car trailers with the wheels in the middle of the trailer. And then people try to reverse them up the road a little bit. And you've got um, maybe, maybe a car's width between the back of the car and the pivot point on the wheels um, and that makes it really difficult it is genuinely difficult to reverse a car with a small trailer on the back it's far more difficult to reverse a car with a small trailer than it is to reverse any kind of vehicle with a long trailer reversing with a long trailer the only difficulty is seeing where you're going right you can't see behind you all that clearly but actually reversing the trailer itself is really easy it's 
it, it, well, you just got to sort of snake it a little bit. And it's really easy to follow. It's, it's no, um, it's, I was say it's no challenge. There, there is, it is, it does have its, you know, built-in challenges and its innate difficulties and so on. Um, but it's, it is way easier than reversing a car with a trailer. I know people who spent years, you know, just driving a car and never actually driving anything else. Um, who are able to competently reverse a car with a small trailer, who then, for the first time in their lives, get into a tractor and have to reverse a tractor and a grain trailer, or a tractor and just a flatbed trailer that's um, hooked onto the tractor, not with an extra turntable in it or anything like that, just a, a regular one, and they back it up, and they're like absolutely gobsmacked at just how easy it is to reverse a tractor and trailer when it's so much, you know, a nice long trailer. It, it, this one here, look, really short wheel, uh, a really, a really short sort of length of base there. So it, it does turn. It goes to turn a lot quicker, and it's amazing how many people they genuinely like gobsmacked at how easy it is to reverse a tractor and trailer, um, when compared to a car and trailer. If you can, if you learn to do your reversing with a car and a, a um, small trailer on the back. If you master the art reversing that one, anything after that, just it's, it feels like child's play. It really does. Um, I kind of learned doing both together. Um, I grew up on farms and around farming, so I, I reversed plenty of tractors. But I also um, reversed cars and trailers at the same time. And we had a very small um, calf trailer that would, it was designed for the car, but we'd also put it on the tractor and we'd take it, um, you know, if we needed to move it around a yard, we'd move it around with the tractor. Uh, and so in order to do that, in order to move it with the tractor, we had, you know, the bar that is fitted onto this, you know, onto any of the tractors in the game to pull that rake that we were just using, puts an additional bar along the back. Those bars are not that common on a lot of farms. A lot of farms, they don't use them at all. But we got one, and we've got a ball hitch that we've put in the middle of ours. Um, oh, well, we did have one. Um, and there's a ball hitch in the middle of it. And so we used to use that to tow the car trailer around. Uh, the one that we used for calves all those years ago. And that one was a really, really short wheelbase. And so you, if, you could, if you could reverse that one, then you're probably doing all right. You know, if you reverse that one using a tractor, it was difficult reversing it with a tractor, let alone using a car, because cars, you've got much less visibility. A tractor, you sat up, you can look round, you can see everything is going on. With a car, you sat right down, and a lot of what you're doing, you're kind of relying on mirrors, and hopefully you can sort of see over the top of the seat just enough to be able to see what's going on. Um, so it, it does make it a lot more difficult. But anyway, we have finished our field of bales. we we'll close that one down. We've got one little tiny bit of grass there that I'm going to pick up because we don't have seasons yet, so we don't have the ability to remove everything. I'll lift that up. You know, that may have been a mistake because the next thing that we're going to want to bale is straw. Um, I'm going to fold those wheels away. Next thing we're going to want to bale is straw. We've now got 51 litres of grass in here, which means that the bale of straw that we're going to do is going to all be turned magically into grass. I mean, yes, admittedly, you know, the other way. Why can't we just empty it out? Why can't we just empty out and have a small baler? Baler, a small bale. A small part bale. That's not too much to ask, is it? Surely that's not too much to ask. I think it would be all right. I don't see a problem with it. Right, we'll bring you up to there and drop you off. What do I do next? I'm going to go and get the accumulator first. We will worry about wrapping another time. I think we're wrapping we'll do in our next episode. So I'll get the accumulator. We will get those bales of hay stacked down into the yard as well as that one bale of straw. And then after that, we'll be able to rush off and we'll be able to get our uh, wrapper. Just do my little wiggle. So I'm going side to side in my seat. I love it. Let's not go driving right in through the doors of Carlo's reliable motors. Well, Carlo might have things to say to us about that. Let's just do this very quickly, shall we? We'll go into there, and we want bailing technology like that. And we want to come down here, and we want to grab that Ursus right there. We cannot afford to buy it. Therefore, we will lease it for $3,000. Okay. 
This is going to be worth it because we're going to get a pile of money from selling the silage, which means that overall we're, we're going to make a fortune. We're going to make an absolute fortune from this. So let's grab that one right there. And then we want to go racing back up the road. Uh, I'm going to go out this side because that car there, I reckon he's going to try and get in our way. So we'll go up around here. I was just wondering if I needed to get fuel. Just wondering if we should stop at the garage, but I don't think we need to at the moment. We're the repair bit, that's getting lower and lower, so we're going to have to actually repair our tractor soon. Um, I want to let that run all the way to the bottom. I'm curious what happens when it does actually run out. So at the moment, I've got no plans to repair this one or any of our other tractors. And we're just going to let them go all the way to the bottom, and then when they do... Is it going to be like it was with Seasons in FS17? Does it just, like, stop occasionally, struggle to start, that kind of thing? Or does it just not work at all? I didn't actually look and see how many bales we made. We can see how many bales we made overall just by looking in here, but it's, it doesn't tell us um, everything individually, does it? Statistics, created bales. 24 we've created in this session, and we've done 77 in total. So let's go back up over this way, and I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five bales of hay. Is that it? Do I really only make five bales of... Oh, well, I suppose six if you count the other one up the other side. Did any of them run off down over here? Did we, like, drop one off the back? Nope. We dropped no bales anywhere. We have got... Six bales of hay in total. That's not really... That's, that's not a lot, really, is it? I mean, I suppose we can work this field a few more times and we can get a bit more. It's not a very big field. It, it is rather a small field. And we are currently messing around with round bales. And those do take quite a bit longer to deal with at all than any of the others. I'm going to get the straw bale. I'm just going to dump that one in with it. Like that. And now we'll swing you back. Oops, steady, steady. Don't jackknife the trailer. Whatever you do. Um, we'll run this one down over here. We'll go and get that one bale of hay that we've got left over. And then once we've got that one, we'll bring these down over here. And then our next task is to go back and get a wrapper and bring that back here so that we've got some... Um, uh, we we got a, a, a way of... Is she dealing with all of the... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that the bale of hay? No, that's not the bale of hay. That's a different colour. <gasps> sneaky, sneaky! That's a bale of grass. That's the bale of hay there. Very similar looking, aren't they? Very, very similar looking. Right, well, we have our bales of hay. It doesn't matter so much with this because the grass doesn't rot away, does it? Whereas in Seasons, the grass does rot away. The grass is a problem. And I even noticed when I was playing Seasons that when I was wrapping up the grass bales, I had a whole load of grass bales there on the ground and I went and wrapped them. They'd already started to deteriorate. I already had, I, I'd already lost some of the bales um, as I started doing the wrapping and stuff. I, I couldn't believe it. It seemed very, very quick for them to start disappearing. I'm going to put this lot here. Out of the way, Cerberus. I'm going to put these near this tree over here. I'm hoping that it's not going to be in the way. There. And I'm also hoping that they stand up. We'll see. They might, they might not. I'll bring it over this way a little bit. There. Is that going to, is that going to be alright? Are they going to stay there under the tree? Better, really, I suppose, that we went and put them in a shed, but I, I don't want to. I want to put them there. Because I can. Okay. That works. Excellent. We'll leave them there. Next up, we need to go and get a wrapper, and we need to bring that one back. Unfortunately, though, I am running out of time for today's episode. I apologize that it is a little bit shorter than what I would normally do. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes these things can't be helped. So, we're going to start dashing off towards the dealership to get the wrapper and then in our next episode we'll wrap those bales then we can use the accumulator we can run them over to the barn up over there and we can sell them and we can make an absolute fortune and then um actually i'm not really sure what we're gonna do then 
we need to seriously consider what we want to do next. So today, I also want comments in the comment section down below. Where would you like me to go next? We are going to get cows on this map. Cows is definitely something that we want to work towards. Uh, but I don't want to get them just yet. I'm going to leave it just a little bit before we start working for some cows. Um, so do you want me to try and do things like root crops at the moment? Or do you want me to leave the root crops? I mean, I could expand and we could do a little bit. We could, like, grow our arable enterprise and basically just get some more stuff there. Ideally, I'd like a different baler to the one that we've got right now. I don't want to be doing all round bales because it takes forever to use them. Um, I think it'd be faster if we could do it with a square baler. Um... But yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, that is all we got time for. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.